All right. So I guess uh, I'll just go. We're yeah, uh, one minute early, but uh, I think I need it. So all right. So uh, thanks for coming. Uh, glad to see uh, all of you guys. Um, this is the talk. You've read the, the abstract, hopefully. So hunting malware on Linux production server. It's the story about a Wendigo uh, operation that we covered. What we'll see tonight is a reminder of what the, the operation is for those who haven't read the paper. Uh, how uh, from uh, the, uh, we, did we find the, like the backbone of the, the operation, which is uh, Ebery, the SSH backdoor? Uh, uh, we'll see deployment and the lack of persistence of the of this threat, which makes makes it uh, interesting for uh, uh, the server side threats we've analyzed so far. Uh, we'll see uh, how we escalated the, through the 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 calf bot, the spam bot component, um, and then how we attack the uh, C uh, the command and control uh, encrypted traffic to be able to gather more information about the the traffic. And uh, we'll see how, uh, the various ways that the network operators are uh, doing uh, network evasion. Uh, not the, the network operators, the malware operators are doing network evasion. Um, <clears throat> and along the way, I, I like uh, embedded the forensic and the, 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 the pro tips, uh, I, I called them, inside the presentation uh, as, as we develop the story. So who am I? A malware researcher at ESET, uh, InfoSec le lecturer at University in Montreal. Been doing CTFs for a while, so uh, with Amish security locally and uh, globally uh, with uh, the CISSP groupies. Uh, and I co-founded uh, an initiative to do a CTF training in Montreal called Montreac, and we've been very successful. I added these slides last minute because uh, I've been working on the DerbyCon CTF uh, today. And uh, I was at 60 point, and then I decided, oh no, I'm like right, right in front of douchebag. I need to beat douchebag. <laughs> so I, I beat douchebag after a while, and then I go get a beer, and uh, I, I, I decided to go back and give it a, a last stab uh, a few minutes ago, and then I, I like got in a switch and made like 300 something points in a Cisco switch. So yeah, I added three slides about that. Fun, uh, really cool stuff. It's really a big network. Uh, interesting. So uh, Operation Wendigo is uh, the crimeware. So it's not the facement. It's not like uh, usual, you know, root kit. But they are done only for the technical demonstration. It's really like criminalized operation, making money. Uh, there are three malware components: uh, Linux, Ebery. Linux uh, CDORC, which is the Apache uh, server which redirects people, see you later, and Perl CalfBot, where the infrastructure, all of their infrastructure is running on compromised server. So they like they have little of their own in infrastructure, if any, uh, so far we haven't grabbed any of them. Uh, this is a joint investigation effort. We are uh, partnering with uh, Certbund, uh, CERN, which the Hedron Collider, they are helping us, they have te good technical guys there. Uh, ESET and uh, ESNIC which, uh, is with us. So this is like the Ebery working group, if you want. Uh, so Ebery itself is a open SSH backdoor. Um, it used to deploy itself by replacing the original binaries. Now it uses, uh, it, it places a library that is loaded dynamically, which uh, is replaced in the system and which hooks the original uh, SSH door calls. So it redirects, reroutes the calls and detects it and uh, kind of dynamically patch if you want uh, open SSH. So this has a consequence of if you look at the ash of your SSHD binary, you see no no difference. It's like clean SSHD. So it's actually pretty clever. Now uh, because we uh, published a report about it, they changed their techniques and now they modify libkeyutils to load another library which emulates being libc but it's not actually because it contains the same hooks that libqtil contained before. So uh, all this to say that they're pretty good with their low-level stuff. Uh, the backdoor provides a shell to the operators uh, on all compromised servers, and uh, it steals SSH credentials and keys. So keys, if they are encrypted, it will steal the password. If they are not encrypted, it will steal the key itself. Uh, and if you log in using password authentication, it will be also logged. And this happens uh, when you are connecting to the infected server, but also when you connect to other server from the infected server. So this this makes it uh, like kind of its spreading mechanism, if you want. 
so CDOR is a HTTP backdoor. It replaces the binaries and it re redirects end user to exploit kits or adult reference programs. Uh, and it does it in a stealthy manner. Uh, so one, once uh, per day for, per IP. Uh, Calfbot is a Perl spamming daemon. And uh, it deletes itself, so it's not persistent. If you uh, find a server running Calfbot, you will not find the, 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 the Perl script. Uh, it's, it's gone. So if you reboot your server, you do, you're not infected anymore. It's kind of a trade-off they, they make. And it's hide as a cron D. So I, I'll just like skip through this uh, quickly, but uh, it's just to say like there are there are three malware, but there are like 11 components and it's all uh, running on uncompromised servers. So there are a lot of uh, redirection of um, uh, through uh, reverse proxying, IP uh, into IP, IP tables, and it's all in there. It's all their stuff. The, 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 the operators own it. How does it expand the, the, the malware? Well, we haven't seen any evidence of exploits or anything like uh, zero day or known vulnerability. So it's all about stolen credentials. They have credentials. They are into, for example, SSH gateways. And uh, they get more uh, credentials in these systems. One uh, noticeable uh, case is cPanel. cPanel got infected by Avery, And it was their support server. And every staff of cPanel support was pivoting through this server to get to customers. So the, it, it's where they stored all the the keys if you want and so like it it spread every like for them it was a very good uh, compromise if you want so uh it, it's 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 hard to like people want to hear that exploit stories but it, it's none of them it's just because you're using passwords to to authenticate and this is a good uh, example of why two factor authentication maybe should be brought into the server story like people uh, are using SSH keys and think it's it's sufficient, but with two factor uh, you wouldn't have that problem because you would have next uh, another like physical token that the, the the malware operators wouldn't have like Google Authenticator anything like that prevents this kind of uh, of uh, problems unless you're compromised of course, but it's another thing to manage. So how can they do it? Like the spread we've been collecting uh, uh, through our analysis. Uh, uh, the stolen credentials that the botnet uh, did uh, get and like it's it's a lot of the percent of stolen credentials are root so they spread because people log in as root from other servers that as root oh lost the power of the oh it's a cable sorry So yeah, mostly root credentials. Um, the thing, uh, why is why did we call it advanced? You know, everyone wants their malware to be advanced. Uh, so here's our reason. So it's close to no disk persistence. For example, Avery and Cdork, they never rely on files on the file system besides their own the the, the code. All configuration, all like um, the, the 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 thing they use and they they collect the logs is all in shared memory. And they do uh, interprocess through the share memory, and uh, it's collected then by uh, an external server. So nothing ever hits the disk except for the the the, the code. Uh, it 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 uses share share memory like I did. I I told about the hooks also earlier, and it doesn't affect existing services. So CDORC, for example, which is an Apache backdoor, it uh, will never interfere with the website. It will always, and it wants the website to stay. You know driving traffic because that's what they do and one hit out of a thousand they will then oh, inject a little high frame they need to go to uh, the exploit kit so it's really it re it's really nasty effective because there's a large number of, of compromised server it it uh, for the the calf butt piece of the malware uh, it validates that the spam works so it it uh, does a test run test send the command is called which will send spam to Yahoo, email, uh, Gmail, um, Outlook.com, and then will validate, like will collect through uh, fake users, uh, the users that the operators control. It, we, he will fetch these emails through pop and then validate, okay, I've got the hash I sent myself. 
So I'm sure this server is able to send spam on the internet and then he will get sp the real spam jobs. So it's really, uh, really, you know, insisting on results. Uh, and it will maximize server resources. So if there is no web server, it will not install a web server component. If there is a, a big and interesting web servers, it will, it will do it. Pro tip, uh, shared memory analysis. Uh, you can use IPCS to do shared memory analysis and uh, SHM cat, which is uh, available on the given link. Uh, this is, uh, so you can uh, dig through the, um, so with IPCS that dash M, you see the shared segment, the permission, the owner, and then with dash M dash P, you can see the um, uh, who created it and who last operated on the shared memory. And then you can go and dump it with the ID and analyze it. So this, is, this was really key for us for uh, furthering our investigation in, in that. So the money trail of this uh, operation um, the exploit kit installs uh, malware on the Windows end users uh, through, uh, uh, it's called Glyptable, so it has more spam cap uh, capability. So it's, uh, it's kind of an open proxy uh, malware, which uh, you can connect through it and it will connect back to others. So it's all about uh, IP obfuscation. Um, the, other, the other goal or the other way they make money is uh, through spam, so adult affiliate program links some casino spam also but mostly uh, adult and like dating type uh, th stuff uh, and also the the website redirection so when it detects that it cannot exploit a user it will redirect it to uh, directly to uh, adult affiliate programs we found uh, more than 25,000 infected uh, servers it's doing more than half a million sorry browser redirection per day 20% of this goes to uh, exploit uh, packs. So, and, and about 10% of those are uh, uh, compromised. So not compromised, but the exploit works. So they, you know, they get malware. So it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's quite big. 35 million spam per day. And uh, we know uh, that uh, kernel.org got infected in 2011. Uh, they, they, like, it's very public what they did, but they never, like they said, they would release a report, but they never quite got to release it. I don't know for like reasons, uh, I guess a few people know, but uh, the, the, uh, we've got evidence, strong evidence that it was uh, Ebery uh, that was uh, on their server. Fortunately for them, they didn't realize. Like they're doing this massive scale, they have scripts, they don't really realize what's in there, so they didn't do anything bad. Uh, besides uh, like using the server for proxying or stuff. So to recap, the separation is real. It's all on compromised server and we should stop using passwords, at least using SSH keys and at best never store them on server. So if you have an SSH key on your desktop and it's never going to the server, you will never have problems with uh, Ibery. Uh, use SSH agent if you need to, uh, you know, hop through uh, servers on the, the internet. And we should start con considering two-factor authentication. I'm using two-factor for Facebook and Gmail. Why am I not using two-factor for servers? And I'm not, by the way. <laughs> I guess I'm lazy. Uh, so share memory, IPCS, and SSA, uh, SHM cat. How did we find Ebery? Uh, we analyzed the CDORC, which Securi sent us in 2013. Then we found SSH backdoor samples. Uh, which we named SSH door. And when we uh, started to analyze it, we realized that the crypto was uh, the same. So the highlighted, the uh, way too small for you guys to see, is the same constant that are used in the, the two encryption algorithm to uh, obfuscate the strings and the binaries. So from there we decided, oh, this is interesting. It's the same guys. Uh, we reversed the DGA, domain generation algorithm, and uh, we then found servers compromised that we notified the people compromised and they told us, oh, do you want to help us? Uh, like, what can we do? And so we said, yeah, good. Like, move out all your clients from that server and then we will, like, you know, use it. And that's what we started doing. So we, we uh, doing, do, doing so, we uh, witnessed 7,000 7, infected servers sending passwords all the time to that, that exfiltration server. And um, we like kind of uh, 
uh, moved on moved on from there and uh, seeing uh, the spread and then seeing like when we clean a server we see it get reinfected quickly and so starting to realize okay like like you need to change something that the passwords your keys and like everything if you don't want to be reinfected not just you know uh, uh, one user's passwords and and this is a this has been hard to convince people they're infected. They, they don't believe it. So how do we spy a malicious user with the same privilege? Now, if we want you know, to see what they're doing in details. So uh, syslog, the malware omits logging. It, it strips the log, as you will see later. Uh, packet, package manifest, they are tempered. The deployment script tempered them. TCP dump, uh, Avery will stop uh, leaking credential if, if the the interface is in promiscuous mode so you need to be you know either target the interface and avoid promiscuous mode or and if you don't know about it you will never think of something like that so it, it's complicated and ssh is encrypted um core dumping processes and share memory yeah you can do it but it's long to analyze uh, definitely um and then we find audit day audit d so audit d is a f uh, auditing system that is built in into the, the kernel so it's hard to to uh, to hook or bypass, and uh, without this, we were able to gather some intelligence. Uh, we were logging all the exec v call with our configuration. So this looks like that. Uh, so you you can probably not see, but it's written exec v, and then you have the parameters. So the first line is rm dash f dash f, and you have like a, a plain text format. And the last line is, uh, for example, a touch uh, dash r. Uh, which uh, will like remove uh, the, the the evidence of the the timestamps. Um, so when there is non ASCII uh, arguments, it will switch to X. So uh, uh, the the arguments are encoded in X, and I think this was for re like really like quotes because they they have quotes and um, it encoded because it needed to escape the quotes. So it's pretty naive, and when you want to grab through the stuff, it's it's painful, you know, to have X encoded uh, stuff. So we're like, uh, yeah, we found some some things, but we we really didn't uh, find what we we're looking for. So we decided to go out of band. Uh, we built a man in the middle SSH gateway uh because we figured that the 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 host key warnings the the operators would not know for a, a new server so let's say they have access to a new server that they infected they won't have the host key that's that's the basis that we uh, started building this thing on and so we said it could work and so we leaked credentials since we knew the protocol we saw the exfiltration packets and we waited, and after a week or so, it worked. So we saw them logging in our uh, honeypot, and um, we we uh, all the evidence that will be shown later is based on this these findings. Um, we used the manadville-ssh tool that is uh, on the available on the signness.org website. So uh, we patched it to be more recent, but that's it. So it's as simple as that. So uh, like uh, a stupid diagram, the WAN and the DMZ. So we, we emulated the DMZ since the malware already supported it. It like detected if it was internal IPs and then would report this is the public IP, but this is the the IP inside. So uh, that's what we, we decided to go with. So what we found was DevOps operators, like their, <laughs> their stuff more than a lot of assistants. Um, very interesting monitoring and deployment scripts and interesting uh, SSH stream redirections. And this is why uh, we weren't successful with our audit V analysis, uh, audit D analysis, is that they stream the, the code through SSH. And so the only process that is, uh, like there's no file download, the, it's not passed as arguments. So uh, you only, like when you do the audit, you only have the, the, the calls one after the other. But when you have the man in the middle, then you get, you get to get all of, the, of the, the code. So it's very interesting way of doing it. It, lives, it leaves a little trace because standard in is from the operator. Standard out and standard error goes through him, through the pipe. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, clever. So we realized the recon and deployment script are written in Perl, uh, and the daily monitoring script is in Bash. Um, 
always reports to standard out error and status. So it's very verbose. It's like uh, uh, like protocol, like I'm mean, some kind of puppet, but it's not. It's their own stuff. So the Perl scripts are not obfuscated, but they are as readable as Perl can be. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, that that great. And let me show you a sample of it. So uh, this uh, parses uh, the logs. Uh, it will don't it will not look at logs larger than 100 megabyte, and then it will uh, grab for its own IP. Uh, username and then fail password all if this the, this the line matches that it will remove the lines entirely so uh it, it it's um it's pretty interesting and uh, it there it carries a blacklist so it will do anything in varlog and it will also load syslog config and uh, then afterwards it will filter out if it's bla a blacklisted log file so it's uh, yeah it's pretty good so how do you reverse engineer Perl? Well, you could pass it through Perl tidy to prettify it, and then you can rename variables. In Vim, it's pretty easy to do, uh, or you can do search replace uh, uh, with your editor. If you saw a packed script, uh, which is like really like a big blob of, uh, of quotes, uh, you can use BD parse module to like get at least the first layer out, and then it will probably be just nested evals that you can uh, Evaluate and not execute, um, <clears throat> but uh, afterwards it's still Perl, unfortunately. Uh, the scripts they check for LD preload trickery, so uh, anything like uh, honeypots and stuff, or anything relying on LD preload to be more secure is uh, it's w is watched upon. Uh, it checks for various restrictive uh, restrictive SSH configuration. It checks for BSD jails. Cpanel, brnmin, agios, ipcs plugin, added d. It checks for generic uh, SSH honeypot. So this one is uh, looking who's the parent of SSHD, and then based on who is it, uh, it will either uh, issue an alert or not. Um, it will detect the tools available if you, if you ever want to compile OpenSSH. Uh, check if Eberry is installed. It, uh, the deployment script will use uh, data, the data um, special literal uh, in Perl to pass binary data inside the SSH stream. So this avoids uh, fetching URLs, which are easier to find because we would have find URLs with other D, but uh, uh, stream data inside a Perl script like that is a lot harder to find. Um, the the data is real binary like this is only like vim uh, output it's not looking like that for for real um uh, it's uh, altering package man management manifests so here it's like listing uh, what debian stores for in the, its package management and it's installing the new ashes inside the manifest of the package management so if you ever do like am i secure in uh, the dpkj it will say yes the ashes match what we have in database so again uh, uh, nasty uh, but i mean everyone knows you uh, there are roots so they can do it but still i think the the tooling uh, maybe should try to put some trust outside because this is naive it's not like they haven't hooked dpkj like the dpkj is being lied to because they modified a the flat file so anyway, well, I plan on uh, going. Uh, I go to LinuxCon Europe to st to talk about this stuff. And I plan on talking to the dev and see like, what do you guys think? Can we raise the bar a little here or like, because it's I, I know like they will say like, uh, okay, for sure, if you have root, you can do anything. Yes, you can do anything, but come on, this is low hanging fruit here. Anyway, we'll see what they say. Um, so the daily monitoring script is Bash, and it's just like you know, gripping stuff, listing users, and then looking at SSH keys, looking at known hosts, and because with the known host, they can, you know, try to brute force them and anything. Um, what uh, other findings that we uh, we had is, where am I at? Halfway through. So uh, it modifies SC Linux policy. It will like detect, okay, uh, SC Linux is, is activated, and it will install policies that will allow his malware to operate because he's root. Um, and there are various means of installation, uh, looks for lots of backdoor and rootkits. Some are even not documented. Like we found stuff that he's looking for that we, that like 
you Google and you have no hits. No one knows about it. So, um, full interaction on Epot is cool. Other day and manual SSH, good tools. The malware group know their Linux stuff. Uh, how did we meet uh, Calfbot? We did a replay attack on one of the URLs when they downloaded it from inside the uh, an infected computer. We built a fake client, so we, we kind of fetched the jobs, the spam jobs, and we avoided the real spamming, but we did the test uh, spamming. Otherwise, we wouldn't have get the real jobs. And uh, we with this, we got spam templates, and then we were able to categorize the, the spam and uh, protect our customers. Um, uh, we found the first layer, uh, command and control, on uh, was always on every infected machine. So this was kind of the first lead that everything was uh, running on uh, compromised infrastructure. So uh, we were wondering, like, how, how many spam th does this thing send? And uh, we looked at uh, the protocol and we saw that it reports like sent and not sent inside the URL. The problem is it's SSL encrypted. So um, we have shell access to the first uh, c uh, command and control server. We uh, know that the traffic is SSL through a reverse Nginx proxy, but we have shell, we are root on this machine. The Nginx binary was deleted, the config is deleted, but we, but not the private key, they forgot to remove the private key. Uh, the remote end of the proxy is beyond reach, so we, we tried notification and they're not uh, collaborating, so we cannot, you know, move beyond. Uh, and uh, the most clients uh, connecting were using encryption that we couldn't decrypt with Wireshark, and they were uh, doing perfect forward secrecy. Which means, and I was amazed by that because I thought it was not that popular, but for most distros now it's, it's common. Uh, PFE, it was activated everywhere. So we couldn't like decrypt uh, because we had the private key. So what we decided to do, we dumped the process memory, we extracted the binary from proc, we extracted the config from the, uh, the Nginx config from the dump uh, and the binary, and then we decided to weaken the SSL sweep. So uh, we changed the, the, the high cipher with an AES without perfect forward secrecy uh, with a simple SHA. Uh, I tried the null cipher, but most clients would reject it. I, was, uh, I found that kind of sad because it was a bit nice. And we couldn't bump SSL because it was expecting you know, to do SSL. So um, With uh, the private key, the AES128 SHA was manageable with Wireshark and T-Shark. We were able to leverage their feature to decrypt the stuff with the private key. So that's how we uh, did it. So now, what the cool thing I learned uh, through this is that you can get a deleted executable through PROC. This is something I didn't know. So uh, this is all an example, but uh, basically, like if it's deleted, the symlink proc usually has an exe symlink which symlinks to the binary uh, but this symlink is not a standard symlink it's a magical proc symlink and when you cp that symlink if you see here the the, the ls you don't see so the <laughs> the um the second ls shows that it's deleted in parentheses so it kind of injects you know special metadata in ls which is probably not ls but it's probably more the file system but it says it's deleted but if you cp it if you do a copy on it you will still get the file so it's running so the the kernel has to have some kind of a file handle on it so it's giving it to you back and the the i did this the sha1 sum to prove that it's it's still there uh so this is actually pretty nice to get stuff that was deleted because in like for example the modern uh, core dump tools they will not give you the, the the executable portion of the dump they will only get you the memory portion because you have the executable so with this you can uh, with either you know have both the the core dump and the executable and you're able to uh, walk through the um, the, the memory uh, dump um Another thing cool that you can do with uh, PROC is uh, since, uh, like, for example, CalfBot hides itself as CronD, uh, you can make sure that, okay, it's CronD, but is it really CronD? So again, you, you browse that sim link, that symbolic link, and you ensure that the target is uh, the real target that you expect. So in this example, 
Um, the, the first one is the real cron. You see that the executable is actually user bin, has been cron, even though the process calls itself cron. Uh, but in the second example, you see that it's user bin Perl instead of user bin cron. And so you know that it's the Perl interpreter, which is the binary and not cron. But you, you don't have the Perl script, unfortunately. And this is hard to get because the file handle, the Perl script is read and then the file handle is closed. So you will not have it in memory as, as is. You will need to dump the process and then figure out the stuff. But this is another story. <laughs> An exercise to, the, to you guys. So uh, once you, 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 you know you have a malicious process, uh, what can you do? Well, you can use LSOF to see all the files that, uh, that are open. You can uh, look at netstat to list a socket. You can do IPCS to see a shared memory, or you can trace it, attach to it to, you know, see what it's doing right now. It's still pretty verbose, but it's still pretty good. Um, what you need to do also and think about when you uh, you dump a pro uh, you you uh, you find a process that is malicious like that is always get everything that is available into proc PID of the process because, for example, in one case that we found. The script itself was still on disk, so the, the sysadmin said, okay, I can kill the job, I have the file anyway. But that, then when he opened it, he realized it was encrypted, and it was using an environment variable to decrypt the script and then do the, the malicious payload. So without the environment variables, you had nothing. You had only like encrypted Perl. So if you would have, if he would have dumped the proc PID stuff, he would have had the environment variables of the process and he would have been able to further his investigation. So, uh, so yeah, go getting back to our story. So we did replace the config and original binary. We sent the sig hub to nginx, uh, uh, because a sig hub will not recycle the process ID. So it was stealth. Uh, it will only like uh, nginx will only kill his workers and then re respawn them with the new configuration as they as they uh, finished uh, handling jobs and then we delight, uh, deleted the config and the binary so it was at the same state as before what was uh, was hard uh, with this is that we did all this but without uh, ourselves having shell access it was all written in email <laughs> it was like okay now you really need to do this and if you're not sure like send me an email i'll be up this night because uh, it was pretty stressful we we were really afraid because they have root and we have root so we were really afraid of getting caught you know but it worked and so we we uh, with this we were able to decrypt the clients and have a lot of information on the um, the threat we realized that 19 OS 10 server were infected by this Perl uh, spam script. Two Windows machine through SigWin, they were able to run <laughs> the malware. Uh, we had uh, in the not specified, there were ARMs, Raspberry Pi, stuff like that, you know, embedded uh, routers, and uh, mostly Linux, of course. So you can man in the middle the bad guys if you have permission. Uh, proc is awesome. I really learned the 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 remo uh, bringing back to life uh, binary. Uh, I learned it and I googled it and I tried like different ways of seeing like do people know this stuff and I couldn't find any evidence. So I'm I'll I'll need to talk to the Linux guy to know like why is then this more obvious. Um, and LSOF netstat s trace uh, is uh, really good good stuff also. So network evasion how why were we not able to get closer to them? So they are using several means, SSH tunnels, Nginx reverse proxy, IP and IP tunnels, tree proxy servers, and uh, they are really, really deeply uh, nested. So the uh, SSH tunnels are, f are through the Eberi infected servers. It's, it's an SSH backdoor. It will not log the, these connections. And uh, it's used mostly to send spam. So you have Windows infected machine with their IP have no good reputation. You have uh, Linux servers that were had good reputation, had not for long, but they get blacklisted, but they, they, they change server. And then you uh, proxy through them to send on port 25 of Gmail, Amazon, uh, Yahoo, and Hotmail, etc. So this is how they, they use it. 
to avoid uh, basically IP blacklisting. And the usual reason people know they're infected by Eberry is because they got blacklisted. Like spam house, they notify, they, they blacklist them. People, oh, they come crying to spam house. Spam house has a generic page like this is probably what you have. And then people like send, like read our report and then send us email like what the fuck? What can what what can we do with that? I'm sorry, I'm I'm not uh, English. I don't know my words. So uh, yeah, we think it's mostly used by Glyptebo infected hosts. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, the Nginx reverse proxy, again, through infected servers, we saw several layers of them. Uh, for instance, in front of Calfbot CNC, I think we went like two um, infected server they, uh, we had cooperation with and we were able to access them, but each time there was another la layer. And this thing is slow. Sometimes it takes several seconds to get back a command, but it doesn't matter because he controls the 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 the, the worm, but the the spam bot, and he controls the server. So it does, like he can build a pretty resilient thing. And the way he configures them is there are multiple possible servers, so he can have a graph of uh, of nginx proxy that will like all go to each other, and at some point somewhere and behind all of this there will be one server he controls, or maybe not even, and he installed another malware that we haven't found. Um, uh, we saw also layers of redirection in front of the exploit kit, um, and uh, the binary is often installed in odd locations like sbin, nginx, and stuff like that. So not that stealthy, I must admit. Um, so this is a sample configuration. Logging is, of course, deleted. You have a variable for backend servers. There are several of them. Uh, this is a CDORC example. This is the CalfBot example. So CalfBot has SSL uh, turned on. So what you can do to find it is simply ps uh, minus uh, dash ef nginx is not even hidden. You will like sloppy admin get uh, bitten by this one. And that's that 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 ANP. So P for process. You get the process name. Uh, we'll we'll show it to you. So or whatever your favorite flags, then if you know better. Uh, so in this instance, like you can see that the the all the like bottom eight lines are obviously uh, proxying through your server. So they can he cannot hide that or he doesn't hide that yet. So uh, you can um, spot it that way. There's also IP and IP tunnels. So this is a feature I never used personally, but uh, I, I I knew was possible again through infected servers, uh, but he used it to hide uh, more uh, type of traffic, like a generic proxy for the operators. So SSH and browser, uh, and there's again lots of tunneling around. So IP and IP is handled by the kernel, created with ifconfig or iproute2 suite. Um, it's a point-to-point -point link that encapsulates IP inside IP. Uh, transport and dependent, so you can pass uh, TCP, UDP, and it doesn't matter. So it's more flexible than reverse proxy or SSH because you, you're not stick to certain ports. You can pass through everything, any type of traffic you want. So we, we looked at the, the tunnels and we thought, oh, let's uh, use a POF a puff uh, and do some TTL analysis and window, you know, uh, size. And so we were able to fingerprint the, the machines and, uh, going through the tunnels. We found FreeBSD, Windows, and, uh, and uh, Linux. It was the traffic was mostly SSH and FTP. Uh, we saw between like three and eight hops uh, for the traffic. So eight hops is a is a lot. If you want a slow internet, uh, you would take eight hops. Um, we saw several gigabytes of traffic on one machine, uh, especially like three gigabytes uh, received, eight gigabytes transferred. Um, we noticed that he was using this to monitor the, the, the famous daily scripts that I, I talked about earlier. He was using the IP and IP to go and poke the, all the various uh, servers. And he also uh, was trying passwords. So another way of, uh, of spreading probably that all the passwords he got since the first, um, since the beginning of his operation, he's using them and trying them or maybe alteration of it through uh, and he means uh, on other servers. So scanning the internet through this. So you can use ifconfig, IP tunnel show, IP tables to find such uh, tunnels. 
Another way he uses is IP tables, but uh, NAT rules. This is an, another interesting way. So he does a pre-routing uh, rule and a post-routing rule, but so the server is still internet facing, but you, uh, through these rules, it, it will simply port forward, perfect port forward back and forth to another server. So if you are infected and you looked at Nginx and stuff, you didn't find anything, but you need to still look at your IP tables and these two little rules can effectively be a proxy on the internet. Uh, so audit your IP tables rules, the NAT table especially, some people forget. Uh, Tree proxy is a Russian uh, free cross-platform multi-protocol proxy server. It's kind of the uh, generic uh, useful tool for uh, not so good people. And uh, so it's, but it's not malware, it's open source and uh, the strings are not obfuscated. So this is the way you spot it. It's, it will be named as a cron D or stuff like that. But if you do a strings on it, you'll be able to um, find that it's actually a proxy server. And of course, netstat would have made that obvious if it's under use. Again, that's the, the, the problem. So uh, you look for kernel level stuff, so IP and IP, IP tables, or binaries, uh, binary level or application level stuff. So rogue nginx, tree proxy, SSH tunnels. We, uh, with uh, these tools. We released uh, IOCs when we, really, uh, when we released the report uh, that to help the community be able to identify if we were infected or not. Um, I, I, I put that slide in to say that uh, we stopped updating them because each time we were updating them, they were changing their malware. And so we decided that it was better if uh, people will reach us instead uh, because we're living, we are living an arms race. Like we update, they release a new, new version, we update. And uh, with the more and more, the less and less exposure we have because he, he's like closing in and knowing like uh, our uh, wets our stuff. And now with this talk, once it will be public, if it ever gets enough views or I don't know, but I'm afraid that he will simply like find our honeypot and just kill it. I, let's hope not, but it, it's possible. So we're doing a little sprint of, you know, um, getting the word out and having admins being better at do this stuff themselves. And hopefully, uh, it will happen, but uh, meanwhile, if you you think you have something and you're not sure or you don't have the resources, especially reverse engineering can be hard of 64-bit uh, code, uh, don't hesitate to reach for us. Uh, we won't charge anything, just uh, we, we will look at it. So uh, closing um, words, uh, be creative on the bad guys legally. Uh, out of band cannot lie. Uh, cannot lie. So the the it was really good for us uh, the the man, the honeypot because it really gave us information we wouldn't have uh, had otherwise. And we we never realized the the uh, like looking for forty and more backdoors that like some of them not even documented on the internet was really unexpected uh, for us. Uh, native tools help a lot, so nothing, no product, no complicated things, just like knowing your system and using native tools, but <laughs> native tools will start to lie, like if he can LD preload your native tool or if he can patch them, or because he's root on the server, so he can do all this stuff. So I'm thinking one day native tools like LSOF, Netstat, he will like kind of, uh, he will make sure that he it won't list his stuff. So you need to be, you know, uh, on the lookout for uh, alterations like that, and uh, and hopefully we'll have the, the like the defense side uh, step up their game uh, in in uh, like coherently. Um, if you find anything suspect, uh, send it to us. We're pretty open about this. And uh, with that, uh, thank you. I'm sorry I sprinted through this. Uh, but uh, I needed to get the content out. So thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Maybe it's a more naive and open source question. I think it's like Facebook. Like, if you just firewall social routes, you know, how come a point starts to inside the network? Would that be an infected user who then your tunnels could then. It's 
So Eberi is uh, using DNS for exfiltration. I haven't put that in, but it's uh, yeah, it's DNS based and it's using RSA uh, to make sure that it's not tampered and that it's uh, valid on the other side. And um, so. But the the the, um, the compromised server already sent email, so they need to send email, and he uses uh, send mail. He uses like really the capabilities already in the the server. He doesn't install send mail or or, or mail demons. He's like using the systems. But I like for 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 businesses, uh, it's not that bad because most of of you guys have DMZ and you firewall like hell everything and you know you, you know the, the this stuff the the the, the big 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 uh, compromised places are uh, shared hosters shared hosters web hosters cloud hosting is is uh, insanely infected and they they don't have uh, the the good resources like like, like people with like 5,000 websites on one big server uh, and then you know spam starts going in all directions and like clients call because hey like my uh, kitten website redirected some of my uh, grandmothers to porn and uh, like <laughs> they're like what the fuck and and now like thi and this is the end user calling the web host and the web host is like I didn't see anything and and now he's like oh shit and it, at first he doesn't trust it because if there is admin or anything like in the LAN, in the, um, the URL, or if he starts doing TCP dump, the CDORC will stop redirecting, you know. So it's, it's really like cleverly built on uh, practical uh, knowledge of uh, how the system, the, you know, the big uh, web host system works. And um, there are a lot of, of stuff for cPanel also. And cPanel, again, is another, you know, uh, you want something easy to use uh, that anyone can use, then no skills to analyze if everything uh, goes wrong. Yeah, we haven't seen much stuff behind firewalls. And it's uh, and the word uh, needs to get, uh, go out to them, you know. I'm figuring like people must do consulting for some companies like that. And so if we keep, you know, saying how, how this operates, maybe we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll reach them. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Don't hesitate to come and uh, talk to me directly if you want to have any other questions. Uh,